My name is Lynn Valbuena, Chairwoman of the Tribal Alliance of Sovereign Indian Nations, or TASN as we are more commonly referred to. I am also the former Vice Chair of the San Juan Band of Mission Indians near San Bernardino, California, and previously served as Secretary of the National Indian Gaming Association. I currently serve as the Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution's Nas National Museum of American Indian, and also a trustee for the Autry National Museum in Los Angeles, California. Thank you for holding this hearing. Our native culture is central to the identity of American Indians. Our traditions, our belief systems, our inherent rights, our way of life have all been handed down by our forefathers generation by generation. My daughter teaches my grandchildren the stories and traditions I taught her as a child, just like my mother did, who learned them from my grandmother, who taught me. My mother, Pauline Murillo, intuitively understood and would often talk about Indian people living in two worlds. In fact, I brought a book today to show you. My mother did write this book, Living in Two Worlds, that she did publish, and I would like to give all of you a book uh, when I leave today. Growing up, my mother and other tribal children were teased and harassed by the non-Indian kids. They tolerated and endured a lot of bigotry and isolation just like so many of our tribal elders across the country because of stereotypes and inaccuracies. But the foundation of the modern rights and identity of sovereign nations is our unique legacy of traditions, language, values, and beliefs tested throughout history that shape and inform every tribal member. It is for this reason, and despite past misguided federal policies, hostilities, Hollywood stereotypes, hardships suffered by American Indians, that the self-identity of America's indigenous people remains strong and vibrant. We know who we are, the descendants of the original people who governed this land now called America. We are also her stewards. Research has concluded that negative stereotypes foster feelings of inferiority, shame, low self-esteem among our native youth. Low self-esteem, which has been linked to academic performance and social adjustment, has also been identified as a factor of Native youth's historically low high school graduation, graduation rates and high suicide and homicide rates. I submit to you that history demands that we define ourselves to the non-Native world. Otherwise, these and other stereotypes will take hold and redefine our children and our grandchildren. Clearly, IRA's policy goal of promoting tribal economic development, self-sufficiency, and strong tribal governments through Indian gaming has brought unprecedented economic opportunities to tribes and tribal people. But it has also thrust Indian tribes and Indian people into a very bright spotlight, raising awareness and creating greater interest into our way of life that for generations has been deeply cherished and held private. Every year, my tribe, and tribal governments air and place ads in the regional media to tell our story in our way. It is very fitting that this hearing is held this month, November. November, as you are aware, is the National American Indian Heritage Month. Before it was Native American Week, which was held in November, then September, then the first week of December. My point is, not until 1995 have presidents issued annual proclamations consistently designating November as National American Indian Heritage Month. And we deeply appreciate that President Obama signed into law the Native American Heritage Day Act of 2009, declaring the Friday after Thanksgiving as Native American Heritage Day. This was an important and long overdue acknowledgement by Congress, but we all need to do more to raise awareness of this important month Another important step this committee can take is to reauthorize and, fu and fund the Esther Martinez Native American Language Preservation Act, which was enacted in 2006 to preserve and increase fluency in Native American languages. Language shapes everyone's identity, but for Native communities, there is an urgent need to protect our languages from extinction. Tribal people should not be in the position of constantly having to undo misperceptions caused in part by flawed policies. Indian tribes and Indian people are part of America's past, present, and future. We look for Congress's 
collaboration into the future so that our image and identity is strong and vibrant for the next seven generations. And as my mother and grandmother would always tell me, never forget who you are and where you came from. Thank you very much. <laughs>